If you want wonderful bacon, but you're worried about salt peter in your diet, you want to reduce the amount of salt in your diet, keep watching. In this video, we're gonna show you how to make wonderful ethical bacon, fabulously tasty with no salt peter and reduced sodium. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the kitchen and welcome to making healthy bacon. My name's Hugh and today I want to add to a series that we've made before on making traditional dry cured bacon. I'll put a link to that series somewhere up here. And in that series we go step by step through the process from making your own bacon cure to how to cure bacon, how to cut bacon, how to smoke bacon, and much, much more. There's sort of multiple episodes and we even go into what was called the traditional black bacon that was treacle cured in that series. It's a great series and if you haven't watched it, I would advise you to do so. But one of the questions that came up a lot when people watch that series is, can I make bacon that is completely lacking salt pita, which is one of the elements that goes into a traditional cure, and can I make it less salty because you know, I want a healthy diet? Well, the answer to that is yes. Salt peter is included in, in bacon cure and we cover it in detail in the Make Your Own Cure video, but it's included because it's a specific against botulinum bacteria. It has, however, recently become associated with certain health worries and some people want a baking cure that contains no saltpeter. And again, for heart health and other good reasons, a lot of people want to reduce the amount of salt in their diet. You can do both. And I must stress the next bit, if you're going to properly refrigerate and or freeze your bacon. So by changing the cure amount, clearly what we're doing is reducing the preservative qualities of salt and eliminating the preservative qualities of saltpeter. Now, back in the day before refrigeration, that would have been a real problem and it would have led to spoilage and health issues. However, in the modern world, where if you're processing a lot of bacon, you can pack it and freeze it. And if you've just got one pack open, you can keep it refrigerated to inhibit bacterial activity. That's no longer as much of a concern as it once was. In fact, refrigerated and frozen properly, you don't need to use saltpeter and you can use reduced salt. And that's what we're going to do today. Let me describe the process we're going to use. It's very different than the process we used in our original dry cure bacon series. And it's the process that allows us to use no saltpeter and less salt. So we have to use a different technique. In the original series, what we did was we mixed up our cure and we put it onto our bacon. And as it drew out liquid from the bacon, we poured that liquid away and kept topping up the cure. Brilliant traditional technique does result in a very salty bacon to some people's tastes. So we're going to use a different technique today. We're going to use less salt on the bacon and as the liquid comes out, we're going to leave it surrounding the bacon. Now that may seem counterintuitive, but it does result in dry cure bacon. And let me explain why. There's a process called osmosis. And osmosis basically means if you've got a strong solution of a liquid, i.e. salt with a little bit of liquid, then a membrane, i.e. the outside of the meat, and then a weak solution, the juice inside the meat, what happens is water is drawn across the membrane into the strong solution to try and even out the two solutions. Basic science, but that's how it works. So if we leave that strong solution, which is ultimately just the salt cure that we put on and the liquid already drawn out from the meat, if we leave that surrounding the meat, it will draw out more and more and more liquid from the meat and we just pour it off at the end of the curing process not during the curing process and that way we still get a dry cure product we can use less salt and no salt peter but we do have to refrigerate the end product at the end of the process okay let's mix up some cure i'll put a link in the description to our downloadable recipe and ingredients list so don't worry about trying to make notes but here's the cure I'm going to use today. I'm going to use 750 grams of normal table salt and 250 grams of Demerara sugar. So that's a three to one 
ratio. And if you don't need as much as I'm making, by all means, adjust the quantities involved. I'm also going to put in three spices, a tablespoon of caraway seed, a tablespoon of green peppercorns, and a couple of tablespoons of cinnamon. And I'm going to grind those first before I mix them with the other powders. That's my spice mix for this batch of bacon. I do vary it batch by batch, but for this one, caraway for that lovely licorice -y sort of rich taste that it's got. The green peppercorns give a little bit of fire and a little bit of heat. And the cinnamon just gives that lovely, rich, indulgent flavor. If you don't like the idea of that spice mix, use your own or use none. It has no sort of process in the curing of the bacon. It's just about flavor. And if you don't want them, Leave them out, by all means. Next process then. I'm going to put the salt and the sugar and the spices into a powerful blender. And I'm just going to mix them together using the blender, kind of milling them together. If you haven't got a powerful blender, just put them in a bowl and use a spoon. It's absolutely fine. With the cure made, we need to think about the meat. We get our meat from a lady called Martha Roberts who runs The Decent Company. You can find them online. Just look for The Decent Company in pork. Best pork I've ever tried. Outdoor reared, rare breed, high welfare, wonderful, wonderful pork. You won't do better if you're in the UK and you're looking for sort of pork to make bacon or any other kind of pork come to that. There are two cuts you can choose. If you choose pork loin, you'll get what we in the UK call back bacon. If you use pork belly, you'll get what we in the UK would call streaky bacon. Pork loin produces what the Americans will call Canadian bacon, pork belly, bacon. Next choice, rind on or rind off. Rind on, i.e. the skin, is traditional. Rind off is more modern. Do either or a bit of both. It's entirely up to you. It won't affect the curing process. The last choice you want to make is what am I going to cure it in? You can just use a Ziploc bag. That's fine, but you need to contain this liquid around the meat. You can do it in the salad drawer of your fridge. I use these. This is something called a really useful box. It has a clip on each end. You can get them in almost every size imaginable. The four litre size, these ones, and I'll put a link in the description down there, fit beautifully on a standard size fridge shelf. And not only are they beautifully fitted, you can get two, one on top of another, in the normal spacing of fridge shelves. And if you buy a whole loin of pork, you're going to need two of these. You're going to have to cut the loin of pork in half because it's so long it won't go across a standard fridge. What I'm going to do is pop that into the really useful box on a set of scales and see how much the pork weighs. Having weighed them, those pieces of pork loin are two kilos each. We use cure for this recipe of 60 grams of cure for each kilo of meat. So for each piece of the pork loin, 120 grams of cure. We need to know how thick the pork loin is because we cure it for two days plus another day for each half inch of thickness at the thickest point. And at the thickest point, these are two and a half inches thick. So two days 
plus five days, total of seven days curing time. I'm going to put the cure on now and I'm going to put three quarters of it on the flesh side and one quarter of it on the fat side because it's absorbed much more quickly into the meat than it is through the fat and the skin if we still left the rind on on the other side. I'm using a spoon to sprinkle on the cure but what I will do is get hands on with it in a minute. Don't worry about these lumps, it does tend to clump up because of the sugar, but they're very soft, they just immediately burst. Now what we need to do, anywhere where there's little gaps in the meat, we need to get that cure right into it. We can't have it just sat on the surface and have big areas of meat that are getting no cure. So anywhere like this end, where there's little gaps or crannies, work that cure well into it and over the rest, sort of massage it into the meat. So I've worked three quarters of that cure onto the flesh side. Now I'm going to turn over and work the remaining amount onto the skin side. That's my two halves of pork loin in two stacking boxes. 120 grams of cure on each because they each weigh two kilos. I'm going to put them into a fridge for seven days based on the thickness. Two and a half inches thick equals five days of curing plus two days and I'll turn them every day because liquid will build up in the bottom of each box. I'm not going to pour that liquid off but what it will do is carry out that osmosis effect. So I want to alternate skin side, flesh side, skin side, flesh side during the curing process because we're using so little cure. I've got another pork loin to do now so I better get on with that. I just wanted to show you this because that bacon, that's 20 pounds of bacon that's curing there and it's occupying half a normal domestic fridge that would sit under your countertop. We've got it in an outbuilding because it keeps it out the way and it's useful for when we're processing meat but it doesn't take a lot of equipment to really do all the meat that your family requires. So we'll leave that bacon in there now and we'll turn it every day for seven days. The bacon's had seven days now. We've turned it every day, but left the liquid that's been drawn out in the container. Let's take a look at it now, and then we'll carry on with the process. So here's the meat after the curing process. There's liquid in the bottom of the box. I don't think it's as much liquid as we get when we use the pouring off and topping up the cure method, but that's understandable. There's less salt involved. The meat still feels very firm to the touch, so that's great. You will notice, I think, if you look at it, that the meat's not as vibrant a pink as it would be with a saltpeter cure. And that's because the saltpeter does act to preserve the pinkness of the uncooked meat. To be honest, once you've cooked your bacon, I don't think you can see a difference in colour. But there is a slight difference in colour with the uncooked meat. Next process then is we're going to rinse the meat under the tap, pour off all the liquid, get rid of any unused cure, and then we're going to set it up on wire racks in the fridge and let it air dry for around about a week. During that process, a pellicle will form. And a pellicle is kind of like a transparent, shiny membrane over the meat. And after that's happened, we're going to smoke it. So this is the rinsed meat and I've set it up on wire racks and I'm using the lid of the box here as a tray to rest all of that on and I'll put that on a shelf in the fridge. And I'm going to let it air cure for around about a week. Now with a heavy salt cure a couple of days is enough to form a pellicle. But what I find with these lighter cures is if you air dry for a bit longer the meat really does firm up dries out more and gives a better overall texture. But you need to do it in a fridge. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to leave that bacon now in the fridge for a good week to air cure. And fridges are quite a dry, clean, sterile environment. So it'll take no harm at all in there for even longer than a week if you want to. But for me, a week with this cure gives the right level of firmness. So 
So our meat has air cured now. It's really tightened up and it's lovely and firm and it's formed that shiny pellicle, that membrane over the surface. Let me bring you in close and we'll have a look. This is our air cured meat then. It's beautifully firm now. Hard to demonstrate on video, but it really does firm up. And with these low sodium cures that don't draw quite as much moisture out of the meat, a longer period of air curing, just leaving it uncovered on a rack in the fridge, is really worthwhile in my opinion. You can also see a shininess to the meat perhaps, just over here. And that's the pellicle, the membrane that's formed. And if you choose to smoke, that pellicle will help the smoke adhere to the meat. So if you don't want to smoke, that bacon is ready now. It's ready for cutting and packing. But we are going to smoke ours. We like smoked bacon. So I'm going to go out and set up the cold smoker. If you've never cold smoked, do watch our video. I'll put a link somewhere up here on cold smoking. And honestly, it's such, such a simple process. Really, there's nothing to be afraid of. I make cold smokers out of cardboard boxes and they work perfectly fine. So very, very simple, very straightforward. If you want to know how to do it, watch that video. But we'll just show you briefly the smoking of this light cure bacon. And this, of course, is the acid test for the cold smoker. Take the candle out and the oak sawdust should keep smoking away with no heat source, just because it's glowing and charring. We don't want flames, just a little bit of smoke. This is the cold smoker. It's a cardboard box with a few bamboo sticks shoved through it, some metal shelves and the cold smoke generator in the bottom on a heat proof tile. I'm gonna smoke the bacon for eight hours on one side then I'll refill the cold smoke generator, turn the bacon over, give it eight hours on the other side. Introducing the world's simplest cold smoker, but I promise you it works. It's just a cardboard box and a few odds and ends. Take a look, look at that. Smoked bacon is a wonderful thing. Now, because it's a low sodium, low salt pita recipe, we've got to be careful about refrigeration and freezing. So I'm gonna cut and pack this, and all but a little bit, because well, you've got to try it, haven't you? But all but a little bit is gonna go in vacuum packs into the freezer. If you wanna know how we do that in detail, I'll put a link to a video up here that explains the process that we use. But for now, I'm just gonna show you briefly how we do it. I can't get it all in the frame, but I think you get the idea. There's enough bacon there for two, possibly three breakfasts. Well, that'll keep the family going for a bit, but there's one point I do want to make is you don't need a vintage hand-cranked rotary slicer or a vacuum packer to make bacon. For a long time, that's what I used to cut the bacon, an old ham knife, and I would pack it in perfectly ordinary supermarket freezer bags. But you can use Tupperware boxes or beeswax wraps or whatever you like. Bacon making is ridiculously low tech. It was always done as a cottage industry. In the past, people kept their own pigs, made their own bacon. So don't feel that you need any technology to have a go. That's it. Low salt, no salt pita. Relatively healthy bacon. If leaving those items out worries you, think of it this way. If we sliced a piece of pork, froze it, defrosted it and cooked it, we wouldn't be worried that it would be gone off. So why would bacon go off? It's the freezing, if we freeze, that is the preserving method, or refrigeration for a few days after you defrosted it. Now, clearly, if you're hanging a side of it unrefrigerated from your kitchen beams, as we used to do, then it's a different issue. You need more salt, you need the saltpeter, but we're not doing that. We're slicing it, putting it in the freezer, and it's perfectly fine to use no saltpeter and less salt when we're doing that. If you've enjoyed today's video, can you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. If you'd like to hear more about preserving meat, be that making lamb bacon, beef bacon, sausages, or anything else, let us know in the comments. I would be delighted to make those videos for you. If you want to see those videos and everything else we produce, then please click on that subscribe button and the bell next to it if you've not subscribed to the channel and you'll hear every time we upload a new video. But whatever you do, come back and see us soon. Take care.
stand by for bacon.